Okay, so we are fresh off of beating the game of Trials of Mana, and I feel like this game is a very interesting conversation piece because I can see why people like this game. There are some games I feel like there is honestly no arguable defense for. Those games are just irredeemably bad. But I feel like this one had a lot of elements that if they had just tweaked like one or two things, I would have gone from like, because short story, I don't recommend the game, but I would say from the standpoint, if they had done these things, it would have been like an easy recommend. And I, I feel like I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but let, let's try to, let's take a step back and talk about uh, problems with the game from the standpoint of perspective of new player going into it with minimal spoilers. And we'll go into why I really, really had some problems with the game in the spoiler section. But for now, like I'll give an example. The very first thing you do when you start up the game is you pick your character. The problem is, you don't really know what doing that will do to the story. You don't know what characters synergize well with each other. You don't know what abilities they have. So I would say from a cold open, it definitely left me kind of out in the dark, as it were. And I felt kind of uncomfortable choosing characters, and I'm glad chat was here to pick characters. Because I could see a lot of people just going like, oh, I think these three people are interesting, and then realizing they have like literally no synergy and just being screwed in the mid game. But anyway, essentially, as you go through and you fight, you will get level ups to individually raise stats. You essentially class up after level 18 and get a potential upgrade again to the next class at level 38. The problem with it is, is that you can't really tell without using a lot of outside resources what these different classes do. So what do I mean by that? So there are a minimum amount of stats needed in order to learn things. When you class up, most of the time, you just don't have that minimum. So you won't know if the characters necessarily got healing magic or just support magic uh, versus other abilities because they just don't learn it on the class swap, which is really awkward. I don't know why they decided to do that. So if you were going in without a guide, you would already be like, oh, do I level once or twice just to see what I potentially get? And then I go through and then decide if I like it or not. Um, so that's already a big problem. And then the other big problem with classes is that for whatever brain dead reason they decided to do, instead of going to like what is the equivalency of what's a monostone or certain statues, throughout the game to class up, which is already not a great decision, I would just like to state. Um, on top of that, you have to randomly get an item that only drops towards the end of the game, and it may or may not be a class that you're interested in. So if you're trying to go like full healer or full, full damage, it's very possible you just kind of battle enemies for random amounts of time until they drop. Just this really bad game design. And I feel like that's where like, this game is very interesting co to compare, at least to its predecessors, because there's so many things that it fixed from like a quality of life standpoint and just like absolutely failed in ways that you would not even believe unless you play the game. So I'll, I'll let, let's let's start with some examples since I'm not as interested in talking about the plot at this moment. We'll save that for spoilers. Plot was OK. It was it was better than Secret of Mana's plot in terms of there's more dialogue. Dialogue was cleaner. Readability of text boxes was better than its predecessor. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But from the standpoint of combat, they decided to get rid of charge attacks and the stamina meter from the previous games. It like kind of exists in that there's delays between your attacks. So you can't just like attack, 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 attack. It's like attack, pause, attack, pause attack pause so combat already feels much slower you don't really have a gauge to tell when you're ready to do another attack so you can either just hold the button and let the game play for itself which i'm not a fan of to be honest or you could try to look at their animation when they're done but already visual cues not the greatest and the stamina bar honestly was a better choice in the other games which is very disappointing um number two 
combat is literally a button. You never at any point have the ability to swap weapon types. This, I feel for me, was one of the biggest downgrades of the game. In particular, it just got kind of boring for me, honestly, to be doing essentially a one button combat thing where I don't have to worry about spacing at all. The, I can literally let the game play for me if I want to, and it's not that different from me playing manually. Like, aside from standing out of range of some attacks, I can turn my brain off completely in this combat, which I think is a big problem. It doesn't feel satisfying to do. I don't have to time my moves. The hitboxes are fairly generous. And if I miss, I can attack again almost immediately. So there's like almost no downside to button mashing or holding the button. So I feel like the skill ceiling of this and the skill floor are much, much lower than the other games. I'm not even really tactically thinking about positioning at all while I'm playing. Like the most we have to think about with positioning is how to get around enemies if I don't want to fight them. And that kind of comes into another big issue with this game. So in other games, you could just ignore enemies. Like there are sometimes rooms you had to clear and sure it would unlock a passageway every once in a while. Um, but this game is chock full of forced encounters. You were either trapped in a room and in order to go back, you have to kill them, or in order to go forward, you have to kill a certain amount of enemies, and then you're allowed to proceed. There's a lot of bosses that just kind of fling monsters at you throughout, so there's just a lot of forced mob fights, which are really not that fun with the one button combat. And they try to alleviate this because they got rid of the stamina system by letting you do a special attack. And so the special attacks at first are more like Secret of Mana style, where you unleash an attack like a leaping strike, and it does more damage. It's like a, just a flat multiplier of your damage and it'll potentially hit multiple people. And that's like the closest you have to really like think at all with positioning. But then you class up and you get the ability to do full screen attacks. So positioning now completely does not matter at all with your special attacks. So the trade off is like I can do my non screen pausing attack in like three more strikes more than if I just did my normal one, but it also potentially is an AOE. So like that's the closest I have to think about it is whether I will kill fast enough that it's not worth going for the AOE. But otherwise combat, as I said before, pretty brain dead start to finish, sadly. A lot of the things like you want to be able to dodge are now really just cutscene attacks. So a lot of things that were even in Secret of Mana that were just like special animations from the enemy, like spinning around and attacking or doing like throwing weapons, are straight up cinematics. So you can't dodge those at all. They're 100% guaranteed to hit you. And I feel like also a big problem with it too is that if, if it's going to introduce so many un, undodgeable attacks, there should have been more ways to deal with the absolute insane burst damage that this game has. Like, I know it wants you to really grind as you go to the end of the game. I think we were seeing enemies around like, what, 50, 51? We beat the game at like barely 38, like literally barely 38 we beat the game. Um, but from the standpoint of like, some of these enemy types, what they could do is just completely unfair. And while I had a lot of misgivings with the enemies in Secret of Mana, uh, potentially wasting your time. Nothing wastes your time more than having to fight like werewolves that potentially can just alternate jab stun lock you into repeated AoE heals, which by the way can cancel their own death, so have fun with that if you decide to play the game. Or having like multiple healers in a fight and all they do is pause the action, you have to sit there and wait because it's not like Secret of Mana where you get to... you where you're simply just not able to target them, but time advances. This one makes you watch the stupid Cure Water animation over and over and over and over and over again. And you have to stop. You're physically stopped from leaving the screen when they do saber buffs, which again was in Secret of Mana. And there's just so many times where at, at certain points, in particular in the later parts of the game, where I just felt completely fed up with combat. Like I was just so tired of enemies either just heal spamming and suddenly going from like barely 500 hp enemies which are not hard to kill to having like literally thousands of hp because they just keep canceling each other's deaths over and over to the absolute bs of werewolf and ninja attacks where legitimately they do more damage than 95 percent of the bosses in the game and you fight them fairly early like you at the halfway point you've already fought both enemy types 
and they have an absolute possibility of one-shotting your entire team in an undodgeable attack that you can't interrupt because when they're casting, they're allowed to finish their animation before they die. So there's a lot of scenarios where if you just don't have max armor or you don't have max HP, you basically just die on the spot. And I think that's one of the worst game design decisions. And it, to me, got very grating as we started uh, traveling and fighting like the real bosses of the game. Once you're past like the, we'll call it like the exposition and opening arc for each of your characters. And to me, it just, it was just so disappointing. I, I think there's just like lots of little things where like, Technically, they're better in this game, but they fail it in some other way. Like, I'll give an example. You get buff spells potentially very early, depending on your class ups, and also potentially debuffs, depending on what class choices you get. And I'm like, great, there should be nothing wrong with that. And then you realize that they decide, you know how we're going to determine how long a buff lasts? Uh, we're not going to give you spell levels like in Secret of Mana. We're not going to let it last like for solid minutes like in Final Fantasy Adventure. We're just going to say, you know what? You get one fight with the buffs. So often battles, if you don't have a really good setup or a team or if you're under leveled like we were towards the end of the game, it just ends up being like 20 seconds of casting buffs on yourself repeatedly, then attacking to try to build meter, repeat every single room, every single wave, and it's just a very annoying battle of attrition. I definitely feel like the sabers were better, well, way better in general in uh, Secret of Mana. I think they they technically buff them that they give a minimum amount of damage so sabers aren't like completely flat like Secret of Mana, but the special effects that used to exist on the sabers have been removed. So even their unique identities of being able to snowman people or being able to catch them on fire or being able to uh, potentially do any of these variety of ailments are just completely gone from the game. And as I said before, a big problem with this game is it kind of lost what I felt made it a Mana game. It felt like I was playing an okay RPG like if if they had spent more time cleaning up some of these uh like very like seemingly minor points the game would have been like an easy recommend but it just adds like a lot of tedium and waiting to a game that should have been like still fairly fast paced like not full action game but not quite turn based and i feel like it could have hit that niche for me personally if they didn't do these things and then let me tell you about one of the other things that drove me totally wild like i was going like i was like freaking out at how bad this was this game has some of the worst menus i have ever seen and this is coming from terra enigma and valkyrie profile 2 of some of the worst menus i have ever seen i have never seen lag this bad in menus before i'll give an example they added a new feature which again like it should be an easy upgrade over things like secret of mana where you had a limit of four items in the prior game now you have nine and you get to sub out what your ring menu is with things in storage and i'm like great what a great idea that will potentially make the game a bit less tedious so you don't have to go back and forth between towns if they want to have harder encounters it kind of cements it that yes you have more healing but it's still potentially very difficult or if i'm missing buffs i can go to a place called the night market i think that had some of these saber effects and things like that so that way i'm like not totally screwed when i go through the game but then like they decide that when you open this menu you can count physical multiples of seconds between you selecting an item in your ring, move to storage. That's over four seconds. Madness, absolute madness. So if you're restocking potentially every item in that menu, it will literally take you almost a physical minute to do what should be a, 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 a done. Like, and like obviously you could press it faster if you could do it faster than i said but it's like it should be at that pace and it just adds like a lot of unnecessary game time in all of the wrong places and heaven forbid if you want to know what these items do by the way if they're in storage because you can't read their descriptions where there's the, when they're in the storage which is horrible by the way but even just like the act of restocking or swapping items you could it made me basically not want to do it 
Like, I just got to a point where I was like, I'm so sick of this lag menu. It is, like, driving me wild. Like, I can literally input, like, 40, 50 different D-pad inputs and A, B, and do whatever, and it will not... It won't even buffer your input. It'll just forget it. And it's like that, too, in the equipment menu and the status menu and the AI select, which they decided to not make a ring menu, but to make it a 3x3, which, again, in theory, should have been, like, a very easy improvement over the prior game, and it just... It's just not. It's just so... It's so damn laggy. Like, I just don't understand how they let it ship in that state. So, I also got to the point while, while playing where I just didn't want to upgrade. Because I was like, I just don't want to go in this damn menu anymore. Like, going from the center tile to up to right to where I equip is like, up. One, two, three, right. One, two, three, helmet. One, two three swapped down armor one two three and imagine doing that for every character for multiple slots of their like helmets and their bracelets or whatever accessories they get or shields and it just like it, it just got to me it really did that kind of stuff just really bothers me it's like if if i'm gonna spend time in a game it should be having fun with the combat or like getting really absorbed in the story and my time was taken away by like just crappy crappy menus and interface fortunately at least the ring menu is fast so going into your magic is fairly easy and going into your usable items is fairly easy because they kept it basically the same as secret of mana um but man it just it just really got to me by the end of the game just all those things really add up where i feel like i spent like legitimately at least 40 to 50 minutes just in menus and not because i'm being indecisive i just physically could not go faster than it wanted to go i mean yeah i had some miss inputs every now and then which you know whatever but from that standpoint it's just like wow I lost so much time in those menus. It's kind of crazy. Like a full character upgrade, I think was over a minute and a half to two minutes. Because you also have to wait when you swap characters and lag it. And speaking of terrible menus, uh, what were they thinking with the shop menus in this game? So unlike the other games where I could very easily, for example, uh, see increases for the different characters, seeing if I had it equipped, in like Secret of Mana or even comparing in Final Fantasy Adventure, um, they only let you look at the active character stat upgrade. And then you have to sit through very slow menus of do you want to put it in storage or, or excuse me, do you want to hand it off to the other character and then these are their stat upgrades? Like why do, why do I have to press another button in order to see if it's an upgrade for them or not? Like it could have just marked it differently with like the head icon like it did potentially with the other characters in Secret of Mana to let you know who it's equipable to. And just... And it's weird because, like, you also can't swap who is actively in the shop. So if you want to buy weapons for all three characters, and there's two sets of weapons because you've got a class upgrade, or potentially three if you've gotten another class upgrade uh, beyond that, um, you're kind of sitting there and you're like, well, how much of a stat increase is it? Oh, wait, this is on another character. I have to potentially cancel out and swap into them to decide if a 34,000 sword that gives four more attack is worth more is worth my money over like a 21,000 that gives the same attack minus four. And I think that also comes into another huge problem with this game that really detracted for me the enjoyment of the game. And that is like the reward system of the game. So like enemies drop treasures fairly often, which is not bad. Uh, the traps, you have some skill to potentially dodge traps and based off your luck score, uh, it will decrease how fast the spinner goes when it does like a ring roulette of what terrible thing will happen to you So you can maybe pick safe spots and that I think is somewhat interesting, but I think where the problem is is that like There is just no sense of advancement or achievement in any of these dungeons So what do I mean by that? prior games like Final Fantasy Adventure and Secret of Mana in the same series would give you weapon upgrades as you went along or they gave you weapon orbs so you can level up to another charge attack or potentially they gave you additional spells or they potentially gave you armor or there were pretty you know frequent merchants or there were all these other things here for like 70 percent of the game and trials there's basically no treasure chests to find in any dungeon all of your weapon upgrades come from outside of dungeons um 
they give you a mercy of adding merchants when they make you revisit every single location again halfway through the game, which is like, yay, I guess. But you still have to pay for it. Like, you are not rewarded for exploring. You will not get new options to cover distance in the dungeon. You will not get new options to potentially deal with groups of enemy. Like, in Secret of Mana, I got excited when we got, like, our whip versus, like, a sword. So I had, like, a ranged option. But if I wanted to do DPS, I would swap into, like, sword or axe, for example, for raw damage. Or even spear for, like, a mix of damage and range. I'm kind of robbed of that opportunity of making those decisions because it just doesn't exist in this game. Or like Counterpoint in things like Final Fantasy Adventure, there were a lot of like puzzles as you went through, like you could snowman people and put them on switches, or you had to hit certain switches in a different order, or you needed items to bust through walls, or you needed to find keys. And there was just a lot more going on with it, and you kind of had like a map open potentially and try to figure out your way through. This game, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to dummy run against every wall and hope I just eventually make it to the end. Because I'm not going to get any items unless I kill every enemy. And actually, that's also kind of a bad thing about this game too, is that while there are more guaranteed chests in this game, it's not like the chests are per enemy. So like, for example, if I kill seven enemies in a room, I will at most only get one treasure chest, where if you play the other games, every enemy potentially could drop an item. So it just feels like, even in general, it just feels very unrewarding to do combat from the sense that my combat will never progress unless I hit a very specific milestone. And even then, it's not super exciting unless I grind more levels, and then it becomes a little better. It goes from literally completely unimpactful to it's okay. I think what also kills it too is that some of our characters had like absolutely atrocious cast times. And while we could abuse things to skip the casting animation, we still ultimately have to wait the same amount of time. So a lot of things that should have been like a real fast, real quick, easy buff, like casting the elemental sabers on a character, for example, just end up taking like literally five to seven seconds, it feels like, in terms of casting, where they're just standing there completely vulnerable, not able to defend themselves, taking damage, and potentially can die. I will say, if there was not an ability to basically cancel death in this game, I don't think I would have bothered completing the game. Between like the fact that you're forced into like animations that leave you vulnerable, to potentially like if a boss is casting a chain of abilities and you hit your special attack uh, that you built up by attacking other people, it just locks you into place. You can't do any other moves and you just got to sit there and do the cinematics because you were foolishly not aware of the boss about to do a spell before the text appears. So you're just locked in place, unable to do anything and also potentially unable to heal in time because it'll buffer it until the boss is done and then you're allowed to release your attack and then you die. So it felt really bad, in particular at the end of the game. Like it was not as noticeable in the beginning, mostly also too, because you didn't have a lot of cinematic special finishers. But when you started getting the special cinematic finishers, there were literally points I lost upwards of 500 DPS, possibly more, because I was just locked for solid five to 10 seconds of cast after cast after cast after cast, including from our own allies. So, not being able to do damage because somebody is healing is and, and they're healing you or, or not even potentially you but just someone else is really stupid i'm just gonna say it as it is it's really dumb it kills the pace of the combat and that for me was definitely a very big aggravating point especially in the last three dungeons so plot wise i think it's interesting in the sense that you pick six characters they all have a core story, so like roughly 70 to 80% of the game will be the same. Um, however, the introductions will be very different. You'll get more backstory on the first character you select, and you'll see kind of an introduction to the characters for your companions. And you you will bump into people that they interact with throughout the story. For the people that you don't pick, they do sometimes show up depending on what path you've taken. So you get to see a little bit of their story, but without necessarily the flashback to show you their motivations. Perfect mayhem! Thank you, Chris Grimm, for the raid. And I think that is somewhat interesting where it tries to lend itself to like replayability. But I'm going to be honest with you, like the character party combination we picked, um, I literally learned more about uh, the thief character Hawkeye 
than I did Durin, even though Durin was the character I selected. Welcome, Toriel. Hope you're doing well. We're just going through our final thoughts currently of Trials of Mana. We did beat the game. I was not super happy with it towards the end. So I think from that perspective, like, I, I can see why people potentially would like it. I would say maybe, like, people that are not as into gaming might also like the SNES version of the game. Because it's very simple. But for me, simple is very boring. So I can see why people would like it if, like, the combat is something they can overlook. Or if they're willing to put up with those, the world's worst menus. Honestly, I've not seen a game with worse, worse menus yet. And it's there. Yeah, oops, end of stream. So unfortunately, as I said before, I don't think I can really recommend the SNES game. So I feel like overall, now that we've completed the collection of mana on the Switch, Trials of Mana for me was the weakest game, sadly. Even though from like an aesthetic standpoint, it's very pretty. From a music standpoint, the music's good. It's just like the other important element, the gameplay, didn't... It, it's not good. It held up a little better in, in, compared to Secret of Mana, don't get me wrong, but it's still not very interesting, sadly. Yeah, I am kind of interested in the remake a little bit. I am worried the combat of the remake is going to be too easy. I think that's my biggest fear going into this. So I'm going to hope that they fix a lot of problems like Mana Seeds are not RNG drops from enemies that are class dependent. Uh, obviously, four second loads between selecting items should not ever be a thing. I would hope they fix that in the remake. Um, I guess I want combat to be a bit more involved. I mean, just one button, literally the entire game, no weapon types, no even like weapon weaknesses, which was also a thing that was not in this game. Uh, definitely really dragged it down. And due to just like the raw number of cinematic effects, it didn't really feel like my positioning on the screen mattered for the most part. I think we had the misfortune of choosing a story path that involved some of the most tanky enemies I have ever seen. So that was a very, very brutal end of the game. Retro Anne saying, what is the best song of Trials of Mana? I'm not sure what the song names are. That's, that's a hard question to answer. I guess I kind of like maybe the, the the Rent Kingdom music, maybe the boss music's OK. It's not my favorite of the series. But yeah, I, I think from that standpoint, Chad, I was definitely very disappointed overall. I don't think I'll be continuing with the other routes on the original game. It sounds like Final Fantasy VII music, maybe. But I think what we'll end up doing is we will give the remake a shot, and I'm hoping that they fix a lot of the issues of combat. I'm really hoping in particular when we get to there, we're not forced to walk really slowly past enemies and run will be a thing. I'm hoping there will be way less force encounters. I'm hoping dungeons feel more rewarding to explore. I'm hoping there's a better balance with some of the characters. And we'll see where it goes from there. Been playing the original FF7. Hopefully you're having a good time with it. But I think overall, chat, I can't think of anything else to add that doesn't go into spoiler section. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We very briefly touched on plot. The plot is okay. The plot is not the reason you would want to play this kind of game. It's supposed to be the combat. So like, while it's competent enough and that you can follow what they're doing, and it's less nonsensical than let's say like a quintet game when it comes to RPGs, it, it had like a fairly solid story. I just wasn't really invested in it. But yeah, I think from that standpoint, I don't think I have anything else to really add. So if chat has any, any final thoughts they want to add to the game, feel free. I think for the spoiler section, I would just like to say, wow, those final bosses were getting on my nerves. I'm not going to lie. Not having an ability to dispel uh, buffs from the black market to make up for the fact that I had no debuffs made those fights take forever. Holy. It was like when we had elemental weakness, I think the game pace was okay. But wow, those final two bosses. That was almost an hour of the stream for sure. I really want to go back and check how long those fights were, but it was like way too long for sure. 
Also, thank you again, Charlie, for uh, subscribing. I didn't see the notification. You're saying the original FF7 is better. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of FF7. The music's nice, though. But I think from the standpoint of spoilers, what was my least favorite part of the game? Um, other than I think when you go to re revisit the entire world and fight the Benevidons again, that felt like a big filler. Yeah, sadly my notifications just don't show it for you. I mean, I guess I like the Goofy Turtle, which is the music we're listening to. That was probably my favorite part of the game, sadly, which had nothing to do with the plot. Just so you end up in a volcano and then you get saved by the Kappa, who has like the goofy swimming animation. And then we just forget about him for like the rest of the game, which is so sad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess Flammy Flight was better. I, I guess in that standpoint, when you when you get the Flammy f drum, yeah, strum, it it is it loaded better than Secret of Mana. So that was like the only example of the menus between the games being better. It was much easier to tell with the overworld where you were because they always showed you the world map and they had a close up mini map, which I think was well done. So like, I know there's a lot of criticism I'm throwing at the game, but there were some positive points. As I said before, graphically speaking, it was a step up. A lot of things were shaded. I think most of the character designs were somewhat interesting. I do think it's kind of disappointing that, um, what was it? The werewolf boss, Ludger, was that his name? Basically, it was just a palette swap of all the existing werewolves you fight. That was super lame. That, that was super lame. I also feel like when you got to the halfway point, and because we had characters that were on different story paths, so basically, when you pick the game start, the characters that are above and below each other are related stories. And if you pick them together, I think you have a more cohesive story comparatively. But from the standpoint of if you go literally horizontally, which is what we ended up doing, uh, we just kind of had people show up, give like one line of context, and then leave. Durin's final story was terrible. I don't even think we met any of the people that were in his ending at any point in the game itself, which is kind of a huge oversight. They're like, they're like, hey, Durin's back. And I'm like, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> <laughs> we did not talk to you at any point in the game because you're not allowed to go back into his house, for example. So we never got to see any of his story aside from when we talked to the king. And I think his story by far was the weakest. I love too when we were going back to the halfway point in the game comment, when we finally make it to the Sanctuary of Mana and we defeat all the bosses there. I thought it was kind of funny where it was like, aha, this character has died. They were defeated by, you know, the main, the first character you pick's main antagonist. But at the same time, it just kind of made it feel like so limp. <laughs> like all this build up to go fight the Crimson Wizard or to deal with Death Jester. And then like, they're just like, oh, by the way, I lost off screen by. <laughs> that, that was pretty bad. I'm not going to lie from a plot standpoint. Uh... Yeah, as I said, other than that, I mean, there were like a couple of cutscenes early on in the game, like when you do stuff in the Dwarf Village, for example, where we felt like we were interacting more with the NPCs of the world, which I think was like a good approach. But then I feel like almost literally beyond that point, I barely interacted with any of the NPCs unless they were like, related to the canon. And sadly, a lot of the times where they tell you to do something and then you, you come back to talk to them to see if they have bonus dialogue, they just don't have anything additional to say. So I felt pretty unrewarded for going back and talking to people since their dialogue did not update very often, if at all. Uh, I think that's it in terms of spoilers. I think we complained about most of the major bosses. As I said before, that, that final hour when we were playing, trying to get through the equivalency of Belladonna and the Dark Messiah, that that was that was probably like my bottom five moments in F SNES games. There's one thing I really don't like, it's to be in very long, tedious, grindy battles. And unfortunately we had two back to back where we just didn't have any tools needed to beat the game, which was really sad. But we got through it eventually, I suppose, and there's the upside to that. 
Do you have any other comments about the game? I'm trying to think. We compared it before to the other ones. I think this is definitely the weakest of the three. I think ultimately, I think Final Fantasy Adventure held up the best and was a lot more fun. I'm kind of curious if maybe we will retry, we'll do the remake of Sword of Mana or one of the many remakes of Final Fantasy Adventure to see if that fixes like the very small but somewhat serious issues, uh, in particular involving the Maddox and the Keys. I, I don't know with this game, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, definitely overhauling the combat I think is really good for us, but I think we'll save that speculation for when we try the remake, but as I said before, I, I will probably never go back to this game. I have no interest in trying out the other story paths. I think we saw most of the endings, so each of the characters did have like additional details if we beat the game with them which was somewhat interesting, so there was like more of a purpose to picking them. Um, I didn't really care for the fairy companion at all. I like our characters were like super invested with her and I'm like, what? we barely talked to her before she was in danger. And she kind of, she kind of just inhabited our body for like half of the game without our permission. So take that as you will. Yeah, I, th I think that's it. I, I think that, well, actually, one additional thing. I think it was interesting they added throwable items in the game, but the fact that the throwable item wasn't just, like, an actual javelin or a bow that you could do in real-time combat and was another pause screen thing, I think was very, very disappointing to me. I, I think they tried to make the characters a bit more balanced overall, so, like, for example, everybody wasn't in just, like, a hard-defined role. Like, there are characters that were clearly more strong and tanky, and their characters clearly geared towards intelligence and elementals or spirit, which is support and summons, for example. And you could kind of play with the archetype a little bit, but ultimately, like, again, you're kind of hard stuck with them. So I feel like if you've not really done your research into the game, you know, playing an hour and a half, two hours in the game to get a full party, because you don't start with all three characters immediately, uh, just to find out that you hate their stats is a pretty bad user experience so hopefully if they take cues in the future they give you very clear indications like what you're really getting into like what are the character strengths what is what is the background of the character do i even want to go into their story and i think this game lacking a manual also definitely hurt it quite a bit so you don't really have context for what a lot of the major stats do you could kind of figure it out, but there's definitely a lot of obtu obtuseness. And unfortunately, there's also quite a few bugs in the game. It's not as buggy as Secret of Mana. I think it's basically impossible for a game to be as buggy as Secret of Mana and still be functional. Um, but from that standpoint, you know, certain stats didn't work. Um, if you cast things like Saber after you cast Strength Up, for example, it would actually make you do less damage because it forgets the bonuses. Uh, obviously, death canceling is, I don't think, intended at all, but who knows, maybe it is. And just some j overall issues with, uh, again, just the flow of the combat. I think just really kind of put a damper on it. So I don't think I have too much else to say. I think I've commented about everything I can really think of when it comes to this particular game. So sad to say... Probably it, it I it's kind of weird to call this a contender for worst game of the year, but to be honest, like it kind of was. And I think it's kind of an interesting conversation point just because like there's nothing like hugely bad about it. Like it's not extremely offensive. It's just like all those little things with like game feel and like the time spent and the reward were just not there. And if it had spent like a few more months in testing to see how it felt to play the game and definitely removing things like the lag which is ridiculous that you have lag like that uh, i think it would have led to a much more enjoyable game without changing like pretty much anything at all aside from like a couple of like back-end mechanical numbers i think it would have benefited greatly but sad to say it is what it is when it came out so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube, and this is, I think, it for the final thoughts. So I'd like to thank you all again for watching to this point, and uh, hopefully, hopefully see you again in the next game.